On the 12th of May 1789, William Wilberforce made his first speech in the House of Commons against the slave trade. Slavery is one of the biggest tragedies of mankind. Empires, for all the rhetoric around why some succeeded, why some didn't, every single empire that's been successful has used slavery. Now we can look on slavery as what it is, abhorrent and immoral and unjustified and disgusting. There is modern slavery, but this is about the actual legal trading of human beings. Now the change from slavery being an accepted form of forced labour to the situation we have now, where it's illegal, thankfully, it, there has been a series of steps. And the first one in the UK was this speech by William Wilberforce. When William Wilberforce, the independent MP for Yorkshire, stood up in the House of Commons on the 12th of May 1789, he was standing in a room of privileged gentlemen, many of whom were making a lot of money on the back of either owning or trading slaves. Now Wilberforce took a rather pragmatic approach in his first speech. He didn't call for the abolishment of the slave trade initially. He knew that he would have to do this in stages. If he went straight in for it, it would probably have been thrown out of Parliament and taken a lot longer to, um, to get to where he wanted. So he highlighted the conditions that the slaves were being kept in and argued that actually the healthier the slaves were, were I hate using the word slaves, um, the healthier the slaves were, the actually the more productive they might be, the, the better that might be actually for their employer. Now it may seem frustrating to us looking back that he didn't just call for an outright abolishment of slavery and the slave trade from the beginning, but he, he knew his audience, it was of the time, he knew that he would have to bring this in incrementally. He needed to start the conversation and this speech did begin to turn the moral tide on slavery. It was the first step to the eventual abolition of slavery and the slave trade. It wasn't until February 1807 that the Slave Trade Act abolished slavery, and it wasn't until 27 years after that that full emancipation was actually given. Now, the abolition of slavery obviously didn't come down just to one man, but without William Wilberforce beginning that argument and starting the discussion around slavery and slave trade, human trade, then it could have been a lot longer that the slave trade and slavery continued. When I was doing some research into Magna Carta and how Magna Carta had been invoked throughout the centuries for various different causes, slavery um, came up as one of the times where Magna Carta was sort of cited. And it was used on both sides of the argument. Um, the one side for uh, you know, freedom, liberty, for humans and the other side which argued that these humans were in fact property and no man should have his property seized without reason and in fact MPs were so our members of parliament MPs were actually compensated when slavery was abolished for their loss of property and that uh, borrowing that was created in order to pay the MPs their compensation has only recently been paid off.